Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Turmel, and this is the last in my videos during the Canadian election from smartestmanonearth.ca. And it's my letter urging Justin Trudeau to give us Bank of Canada central bank accounts. Honorable Justin Trudeau, dear Prime Minister, congratulations on your election to lead our nation. Boasting your studies in engineering, you were an easy best choice against an economist and two lawyers. Though switching to political science was a wise move given your future career, you did have the prerequisites to even get in to study engineering, and I know what that takes. During your youth in Ottawa, you may have heard about my busts for running many underground casinos. As the former teaching assistant of Canada's Only Mathematics and Gambling course at Carleton University, I've since become the great Canadian gambler and the professor at the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City of rounders, poker, moody fame. Go see johntermell.com slash gambler. My quote, hidden dimension in math, unquote, at johntermell.com slash inverts. And my hold them poker instruction videos at johntermell.com slash Taj Professor may give you some idea of my expertise. Between busts, you may remember me picketing Parliament after the Bank of Canada every Thursday for five years in the early 1980s. You may remember my running in federal and Ontario elections and by-elections and Ottawa, Nepean and Gloucester municipal elections, always losing. The Taj professor wouldn't invest all that time on losing gambles merely to get into the Guinness Book of Records for most elections contested, 87, and most elections lost, 86. Canada's federal debt. Okay. And has these. HTTP smartest man on earth dot CA pet debt dot GIF is the graph of Canada's national debt. It was always under 20 billion until 1974 when a catastrophic policy change made it balloon to 600 billion in 20 years. Prime Minister Trudeau had stopped interest-free lending funds from the Bank of Canada, which compelled Canada and the provinces to borrow interest-bearing funds from private banks and presto, 10 times the national debt from 20 billion to 200 billion and only 10 years before it was voted out. Subsequent governments were hampered not only by increased debt, but increased debt service at higher rates, which tripled it again to 600 billion in Mulroney's 10 years. Well, the $1 billion debt service on a $20 billion debt paid in 1974 was a pittance compared to the debt service on the later 600 billion. Worse, in 1968, the 6% cap on interest rates was repealed under Pierre, so Bank of Canada Governor Gerald Bully could raise the interest rate to 22%. Averaging 25 billion debt service over the past 40 years, that 1974 decision to stop using the Bank of Canada cost Canadians over a trillion, a million million in taxes for debt service to private banks for funds it could have borrowed from the Bank of Canada interest free. With the unpaid debt still remaining to now plague you. Your father was great with so much, but didn't seem to have your knack for numbers. The Trudeau legacy is not only Canada's 30-fold national debt and trillion in taxes bled from us to pay interest to private banks when he didn't have to, now add the taxes from the provinces to pay the new debt service. They could have avoided borrowing interest-free funds from the Bank of Canada. And you'll see the Trudeau legacy is far greater than just the 600 billion national debt and a trillion in interest paid. Who knows why he switched banks, but there's no way to recoup the trillion he lost. But you can now put a stop to those losses by reversing his catastrophic decision and once again taking advantage of the Bank of Canada for interest-free loans. The Committee on Monetary and Economic Reform, Comer, action in federal court 
seeks a declaration that not using the Bank of Canada for interest-free funding has harmed Canada will write to the tune of a trillion dollars. In the UK, Jeremy Corbyn has proposed quantitative easing for the people, not the banks, by borrowing interest-free funds from the Bank of England for infrastructure investment, as Comer argued was done to fund the St. Lawrence Seaway. Now, demanding the Bank of Canada or England be used for interest-free accounts to fund governments is nice, but in the past election, I organized a coalition of candidates from 12 different Canadian parties to support Bank of Canada interest-free accounts for citizens too. Smartestmanonearth.ca. I financed the original LETS local employment trading system, interest-free bank freeware. In 2000, I addressed the Millennium United Nations Forum which passed my Millennium Declaration C6 to governments to, quote, restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative time-based currency, interest-free unilets. Now, the censors cut out interest-free unilets in the final document, but time-based means inflation-free currency. Always worth 60 minutes. Well, the lets, one over S algorithm should be installed on the Bank of Canada's central computer. The software can handle citizens as well as provinces and the country. Let's engineering mathematics, johntermell.com slash bank math. The movement for central bank accounts isn't restricted to Canada. During the Greek crash, Let's time-based currency network sprang up. So it was no surprise to find that Plan B was an online digital currency for citizens, presumably managed by the central bank if the other plan A fell through. Scotland is now proposing a digital Scott coin or Scott pound for its citizens. The Let's algorithm makes that easy. Last week, the Swiss announced they were setting up a digital currency. Canada should move fast to be the first. As the only electrical engineer specialized in computers and banking, interest-free casino model, I devoted my life to my duty of banking systems engineer Iron Ring, to eliminate the interest positive feedback on debt instability in the 1 over S minus I bank software. Once I discovered it, usury, interest on sterile money, creating the mort gage death gamble. Ezekiel 18 said it best. Suppose there's a righteous man who does what is just and right. He does not lend to them at usury or take exception of interest from them. That man is righteous, he will surely live, declares the sovereign Lord. Suppose he has a violent son, he lends at usury or takes excessive interest. Will such a man live? He will not. Oh, difference between usury and excessive interest. Usury is on gold, interest is on cows. One has baby, can be paid. One is sterile, cannot be paid. Creates the death gamble. Ah, uh, so, but suppose this son has a son who sees all the sins his father commits, and though he sees them, he does not do such things. He takes no usury or excessive interest from them. He will not die for his father's sin. He will surely live. But his father will die for his own sin because he practiced extortion, robbed his brother, and did what was wrong among his people. In debate, you said you'd run modest deficits, but deficits still make you a loser when you could be a winner if you stop debt service applied all future payments against principal, so someday you pay off the pet debt. Putting the 6% cap back on in the Interest Act would be nice touch, though it won't be necessary if you install Let's Citizen Central Bank Account software right. With this heads up from the banking systems engineer, you could lead the way in central banking reform, or watch some other leader engineer a national digital currency with central bank accounts before you do. Then, if not number one, you can still be number two or three. In a sense, you're Canada's first PM with high-tech credentials and shouldn't have to be dragged into the digital money age. So, be a leader, end the service of the pet debt at only one Trudeau trillion, and it won't be long before you're winning budgets rather than losing budgets get us out of the hole. In your soul, you must sense the duty of the engineer. But in this case, 
Your victory is also serendipitous chance for the Son to atone for the sins of the Father. I'm John, the Banking Systems Engineer Terminal.